Right, so this spark brake is off a Triumph Daytona. And um, we'll get all the oil out of it actually. I find something to put the oil in. Uh, the brake fluid, just find a wee cup or something. What have I got? That'll do it. So I'll just, no, I'm not going to use it again, it doesn't really matter. Just get all the fluid out. Drain all the fluid out. It's quite a lot in that caliper actually. I want to get an old cloth down. That's all the old fluid there. Get that out of the way. It feels better in here. I had some cleaning solutions in here. Um, this is just a dirty, wet, scabby old cloth. I was at the bike with it. It's raining at the moment. Uh, let's get this over here. And I've already pumped the pistons out quite a bit on the bike. It's easier to do that on the bike. I can just try and grab hold of these and pop them out. Uh, and I've got new seals. Where did I put them? Excuse me, I had to put them somewhere handy, somewhere safe. I think I put them. I've got a little box there. I use I use um, the service, and so any service and item just goes straight in there. So I know where they are. That's the seals there. I've got two um, fluid seals, and I've got two dust seals. Put them to one side for now. <coughs> this has to come off, and I've got all the bits of it there. You can see the brake pads are actually still not too bad. Need a clean up. They're starting to fall a bit to bits there, just on the edges. Something's got in there. Um, same with that side. Something's got in, and that, they're actually quite badly scored. But the thing is with. Um, a rear brake on a sports bike it isn't a very good brake anyway it's, I use only I only ever use it for hill starts or you know if I'm sitting at traffic lights and so I can use the throttle more efficiently instead of using the front brake and having to um, do three things with my hands I just use the back brake just to take off really you know? so I'm not really worried about the condition of these aren't falling apart. Who made them? Goldfran. Goldfran is it? Look. Yeah, the Goldfran. They're just cheap pads. You don't need expensive ones for the rear on this kind of bike. On the smaller bikes you do. Like a Diversion 600 I had. Definitely a good idea to have good brakes. A good, a good rear brake. Because the front brake was just a single disc and it wasn't very good. Mm, so you had to use bo both brakes to stop whereas the Triumph you don't, the front is more than adequate we'll get them to one side and this thing's needs a little clean up as well and I don't go too mad but I'll do that just now actually just give it a little clean up I've got this big cloth I'll rip a bit off this cloth because I won't have a Oh, yeah, a nice clean cloth for doing reassembly. So let's have a look. Can I rip that bit? Oh, rip that bit, no bother. No, oh, it's just the rain today. It hasn't been raining for ages and I'm chucking it down. Take some time off and it's chucking it down. Never mind. I'll keep that bit over there for assembly and I'll use this wee bit. It's a bit big that. I'll cut that in half again. A pair of scissors to help me. That's it. Right, there we go. That's better. Right, get some. If I've got any left, I need to get some WD-40. I've got some in the house somewhere. Oh man, I'm getting shot in WD-40, man. Well, that's not good. That should be enough. Just give it a wee clean up. I'm going to brake cleaner, would you believe it? Come to a job with brakes and I'm going to brake cleaner. Never mind. I mean, the cleaner you can make these things, the more peace of mind you've got, they're going to work as per factory. 
Just the back brake is stiff and I thought I was going to do my back and try to move it because I have to reverse it out of my bike tent and man life it'll be hard so I just thought I'd get it done the biggest job the most challenging job in, in the rain that it will be bleeding the brakes bleed, bleeding this brake back up I'm going to put new fluid th ramp through it but the problem is I've got to take all the panels and seats off so it's just going to expose all the electrics to all the rain so I've got a garden umbrella there I'll set that up um, I can just put that over the bike and it'll save the electrics a little bit and I've got sheets there and stuff I've got an old shower curtain I can just put that over it all you've got to do is fill the reservoir pump it through and then get it to the right level I mean, goodness knows how old those brake pads are because they, they basically just never get, never get used. So that's that's acceptable. That's fine. I'll leave that there clean. I might put all clean stuff over here, ready, just to be greased up and stuff. So we cleaned them, didn't we? Right. What else have we got? We've got these little pins. There's two pins here. These hold the pads in place. They need a wee clean. There's a tiny bit of corrosion on there. I'm going to get some emery paper. What have I got handy? I usually have little bits kicking about. I've got loads of it, but if there's anything kind of scrap, you know, I don't have to tear off a a new sheet. Oh, I've got a little bit here. What size is this? What grade is this? This is 800. This will be fine. Let's get there. This may be a bit too fine, but I look. Get it all cleaned up. I did see a wee tip about these. Um, just put them in the drill gently. Not too hard. See if I can do it. The sandpaper is actually any good. This may be a bit too. That's oh, alright. It's nice and smooth anyway, so that's fine. That's clean. Do the same with this one. I haven't got, I never thought to get any new washers for the banjo bolt, so I just have to use the, the old ones. If it leaks, I just have to get some new ones. I'll probably use a bit of autosol on this actually. I've got to get the autosol out anyway. Oh man, don't you hit it when you run out of W40? Here we go.
that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Even better than what it usually gets. <laughs> right, so we've got these are nice bolts. These feel like titanium. I've had titanium bolts before. These feel nice for steaming up again. It seems to do that for a little while. And to kind of the levels, you know, the difference between cold and hot gets roughly the same. Maybe if I put the heater on, stop steaming it up. Or maybe I should keep the camera in the house. Might be an idea. Right? So that's clean. Another wee good thing with the to clean the thread up is just get your nail, your thumbnail on a cloth and just spin the bolt out and your nail just drags all the dirt out of the thread. That's what we always used to do. And it comes up nice and clean. Don't know if I did it with that one. So you're starting you know you're starting again from, from fresh. You can put new copper slip on them and grease and all sorts of things and you know it's all nice, it's gonna be nice, it's gonna work efficiently. Marvellous, look at that. Now this is the banjo bolt. Be careful with this thing. I've got the, the, the washers on there. I want to leave that where it is. This is the other washer. The washer there really needs to be replaced like, but I'm not going to disturb them too much. Uh, just give it a little, a little blast with WD-40. Just give it a little clean. Try and uh, I probably do have washers somewhere because I have done a lot of breaks. Mm, I'll have a look around for washers because I do have them. It might be an idea to put new washers on that. Anyway, we'll deal with that in a minute. So, this thing's a mess. Wow. Well, you can't get cleaning in there without getting that, uh, getting the pistons out. Look at it, I don't know, the camera's all steamed up. I might put the heating on actually. Just to get the temperature in here the same as the camera. You probably can't see in there, but it's really manky. Right, I don't think I need to take that off, but I will loosen it um, just to make sure I can. I don't want to get to the bike and I can't get it loose. And that's an 8mm. These are always an 8mm. There's no brake pads in sight, so you don't have to worry about WD-40 or any lubricants here at the moment. You, know, you can just get on with it, give it a wash out, give it a good clean. <clears throat> I'm interested to see the condition of these um, seals, see if there is any corrosion there. I don't do see any sticking out. I see a lot of dirt in there, so it's a very, very hostile environment. The back wheel of that Triumph Man. It's not a very pleasant place for a brake caliper, especially in the winter. that uh, bleed nipple uh, broken off <sighs> so 
small. Got myself a new toolkit. I was using I was using this thing, but anytime it rained, I've drilled holes and you can probably see the it's clever. You can probably see the holes in the bottom there to let all the water out, but it's not ideal. Bought these just cheapo things from see the water on it already. <laughs> right, let's get this thing off. I'm hoping it won't be too difficult. Oh, that's it, it's free, it's nice. I'll give that a clean actually. Well, I think I've got some more of these, so. But that's it there. Make sure there's nothing on the seat. Make sure that's nice and clean. Pistons out. I don't know if I'll just wiggle it out, will I? Probably just get a little um, this cloth and a pair of pliers. Just a pair of pliers. Gently. Very, very gently. Just wiggle them out. since I've done this, have a look. We need something better than that. They should come out no problem. I mean they pumped out with the with the brakes so they should come out with these. Marking them, you know. Hmm. I think it's just a case of going for it. Really careful with them. <sighs> coming. Felt like it was coming. It's coming. Just have to be really gentle. Just use a cloth. That's one piston out. What's it like in there? It's pretty monkey in there. Right, let's get the other one out. Although I never used the back brake, you can, it does have to be there, and I don't want to be. I'm going to buy new pistons. Oh, I'm not alive. It's okay. Put 
probably cheaper buying a second hand caliper. That's possibly the one that seized because it was the hardest one to actually pump out. It, this one pumped out first. Definitely, that's the problem child. Get the plumber's grips on it. Careful with the plumber's grips. They've really got a biting jaw on them. They'll dig right in if you're not careful. Very, very careful with the plumber's grips. It's not, it's not moving at all. Just keep checking, see if you're not damaging the piston. I think it did move a little bit. We better put some pressure on that then. Turn in the whole caliper. Wow. That's proper seized in there, isn't it? Spinning. That's it spinning. I felt like it spun there. Try this now. Just get it moving a little bit. Tight. Right, let's just keep going at it. Keep trying. It will eventually break its grip. It's got to be very, very careful with big tools like this. Clamping force on them. <sighs> just moving the, just moving the cloth. That. It's just a matter of perseverance with these things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the filming and then I'm going to come back when I've done it. 
Right, so I got that piston out eventually. Um, it's all right, it just needs a clean. I ended up using the vise. What I did was a, I put the pliers in the vise um, and then just clamped them down, put the piston on the, and then just wound it in until uh, the caliper moved independent of the piston. Just give it enough pressure, not too, not too tight on them because you'll, you'll end up needing a new piston which goes without saying. So in here is a little um, kind of shim just keeps the pads all oh, there really manky. Wow. Manky in there. It's basically just a big clean up job in there. Goodness. Look at all that. It's just not a nice place to be at that back wheel. Get all that junk out of there. I couldn't. Really, I'd rather have done this when uh, the pistons were still in. But how? How is that possible? Um, because I pumped the pistons out. The pistons had to come out so I could get in here. If I pushed the pistons all the way, in, I could have done it. But anyway. Well, there seems to be a bit more in there. Okay, so, mix up some air. Try not to get any into the... into the actual... where the pistons go. Pretty nasty, actually. Get rid of all this horrible stuff. So where we are. It's the thing about these doing calipers that have to be clean. We could have had some brake brake cleaner. Uh, never mind, I don't have brake cleaner. So I'm using what I've got. And there's a good little thing, this is a good thing for getting the, the seals out and for cleaning all the salt out of the, the grooves. It's a little dentist pick. Mm, fantastic little thing. Very, very useful. Because it's quite hard to do it without it. You just need a tiny little screwdriver and you can't really get in there properly with a screwdriver. You can do it, it's possible. I used to do it before I got these. You can get them anywhere there. They're work zone tools, so you get them anywhere, you get them in little packs, you get all sorts of things. I've got um, something for putting springs on, I'll show you. I've got it in here. I've got this thing for putting springs on. You know, the exhaust springs, very, very useful. Because it, it is possible without it. It not hurt your hand though. Try to put it on. Three or four different types of tools to, to do it. Now oh, we're looking in there. Not as clean as I would like. Because the brake cleaner would dissolve everything. And I could get in there. The brake cleaner in. I'm gonna have a look see what I've got. I've got compressed air. Uh, I might actually take that out and use the compressed air just to get the bits out, make sure there's nothing in there. But let's get the seals out, there's no point doing a deep clean until we've got the seals out. Uh, just gently pick them out. That's one of the seals there, you can see the salt on it. Yeah, I'll put that over there. Put that on out. Try to pick 
take it out. Yeah, you can feel all the salt in that one. There's a lot more salt in that one, and um, yeah, they're starting to really. It was a job worth doing, and I've got this. I think these seals are actually, I've actually got that lip on them, some of them don't, some of them are just pressure seals, but these actually have a lip, so the lip, if, I, if you feel inside it, you can put your finger all the way inside and then drag it back, you'll feel resistance on the edge of the lip, you'll feel it kind of, it's higher on the inside, so the new seal has to go in the same way, it's very important, and because when there's pressure, that stops the fluid coming out. The fluid can't get past that seal, but if you put it the other way, this, the fluid will just come straight out. Um, that's it there. It's actually fatter at one end, you can see that. So the fat end goes on the inside, that fat side, that wider side goes on the inside, and it stops with the pressure, stops the fluid getting by. They're actually in not bad condition, but I've got new ones, so I'm going to use them. Something must have been stopping it, unless it was the it was the dust seal stopping it. But that could be possible if it's got a lot of junk behind it. It's there, the old, there are the old ones there. Let's have a look, see what the seats feel like. Now oh, they are a wee bit. They're a wee bit salty. Uh, the dust the dust uh, seats are got loads of salt in them, especially. So far on this side, that's loads of salt on that. Really. So we'll get that off. Get that cleaned up. Is the camera a bit clearer? It is a bit clearer. Since I put the heating on. Maybe that's what it needs. And I always try and get all the... It face the caliper down a little bit just to get... Make sure the dirt doesn't go into the actual... Uh, where the piston sits, just face it down. And don't be worried about how hard you go in here. Um, just get in there and get it clean. I'm getting all the corners because this this has got a point on it, so it gets right in all the little corners. See all that junk coming out of there? Wow. Um, I think the front ones could be do with this as well it's just so expensive it's like 50 pound for a seal kit that's wow um i think that's just for one caliber and it's a bigger job as well and it's a job that you have to be careful with because that is a good, the front brake is a, a good brake on the triumph um I have to take proceed with caution do it properly i'll probably do that in an actual undercover so I can do it right, concentrate on it and have a clear day as well, have a clear bit of time so I'm not, I'm not stressed out and rushing. Like today I've, I've only I've gone to go see my parents today but that's all I've got to do so I'm not really worried. And I can do this then go up and see them. I could even just leave the bike where it is, it wouldn't matter. I'm not going anywhere tomorrow. Yeah. But I'll get it done today. Try and get that hugger done as well. I've been talking about hugger in my last videos. You just gotta get all this junk out. There's a lot of it. And try just to stay in the seat and don't don't go anywhere else, wander anywhere else with this tool. Because it can it's quite sharp and it will it will scratch things scratch areas where you want it to be sealed might cause you an issue so look get some of that junk out of there Getting there. You've 
got to make sure it's all out or it'll just you'll just be back to square one you'll just have a seize break again if it's not properly cleaned out get right in all the corners get all that salt out, that crusty old salt get it all out take a bit of time, see there's still stuff there's still stuff coming out, there's still salt coming out of there right What's that inside, inside seal like? What have we got there? Yeah, I can feel a wee bit of corrosion. Yeah, there's a wee bit of dirt in there. Not bad though. I've seen them where they're like... There's enough to go on your chips. Look at loads of the stuff. This is the one you have to be careful with. You don't want to wander into the actual... Where the, where the piston sits. That's not actually too bad, that's clean already, even with that little bit of poking about. It's just, there was just a little bit on the outside, in the outside corner. Go for some brake cleaner, that will just blast it all out. Anything that's in there will just be blasted right out and it, the brake cleaner just evaporates, fantastic stuff. I do have compressed air there. Maybe just blast it with a bit of compressed air. Uh, air duster. Just make sure it's all nice and clean. salt. I don't think this bike's ever been run in the winter. It doesn't look like it ever has. This, this is possibly the first time this has ever been done on this bike. But that's one of the things about running in the winter. It just You can't avoid it. It's going to be one of those jobs you're going to have to do if you decide to run your bike in the winter. That's just dirt and there's not actually, not actually crusty salt in any of the corners. It's just dirty. Just needs um just needs a proper clean out. That bit's got a bit that far this piston here's got a little bit a build up of, of salt, wood grit. Mm, it's a tiny bit, it's not much. find some way of giving this a blast out. Um, could have sworn I had brake cleaner somewhere. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some brake cleaner. I'm back in a second. I couldn't find any brake cleaner but if you, if you look in, if I can get you looking inside there. Um, they're not perfect. I've got to use a little piece of advice that I saw on Del Boy's garage, which was a bit of autosol, or metal polish, you know, anything like that. Um, got some autosol here somewhere. A tiny bit of autosol left. Yeah, a bit of autosol on a toothbrush, just a tiny bit on the end of it. 
Oh. Tiny bit of water salt on the end of a toothbrush. And then just polish up those tracks. Just get it in there, work it in there. And just get those little seal tracks all polished up. Waste some water so I'm flicking it over myself. So on the shopping list is brake cleaner. Just give them a little polish up. And I'll do the pistons as well, I'll polish them up. Just need to be in the track, you don't really want to get this anywhere else. You can, I'll leave that sit for a second and I'll polish these pistons. Yeah, I'll clean these pistons with uh, this old cloth and a bit of. That's what I've got to clean with. I've got all sorts of things in here. Penetrating maintenance spray, cleans and protects. I've got some pocket rocket mechanics toolkit, penetrating lubricant, protects, cleans. Try some of that. There was one that absolutely stank and I stopped using it. I think it was the other one. I think this stuff's alright, the pocket rocket's alright. See if there's any kind of high spots that are going to damage my seals. They are pretty rough. Probably need a good polish. I'll give them a clean, I'll give them a polish with the hot soil. Um, it's just the pond turned off. It's on the time of the pond because it was costing quite a bit of money to run it, you forget it, you know, you go to work and you just forget you had it on. Um, right. that, that little thing needs a clean as well. I might put that in a little bath of pocket rocket, just to give it Let it steep in pocket rocket. clean cloth it's really really mild for the time of year it's unbelievable and it's raining again there's a wee, the wee sparrows are there there's a, there's a female blackbird in the pond where's my camera let's see if I can get a shot of you but I'll just take this are they going are they know when there's a camera so they do there's a wee bird over there, so if I can zoom in on it. They're gone. They're never far away when there's food about though. There it is, on top of there. If it's gone here, you haven't given us any food. It's not up to give me to give you food, that's my wife's job. I'll be having words. Because it's raining, that's why. Isn't there none there for you? Oh, there's not much there for you. I'll have to get some for you. I'll have to look after the wee birdies. Right, back, back to... That's more important things. Right, 
or to salt time. So I'll put this down. Autosol. And we need to polish polish with autosol. So go squirt. I'm actually gonna get that. I'm actually gonna put that on the actual piston and leave it on there. The same with this one, it's just even leave it for a few seconds just on there let it sit on the actual piston and then I'm going to go back to here where I've had the that stuff sitting seems to work better if you leave it sitting for a few seconds a minute or so just let it sit on the, on the job goes into a kind of powder I suppose it'll become more abrasive won't it Just a matter of cleaning these out with this polish and the toothbrush. Get it all nice and clean. The temptation is to get in there with a pocket rocket. But it's not a brake cleaner, it won't evaporate. So it's not a good thing to do. Leave that there, put this over to one side and then your nice clean cloth to clean out those calipers. Like with it, I've got to make sure I'm filming okay. See, there's nothing more frustrating than when you're watching somebody doing something. I know my film, this isn't really a that very wide angle of camera. So if I put it up like that a bit, I'm sorry if I've been off shot a bit. You just forget where you are. Because the previous screen is actually just, uh, for the camera. it's just there. Not there. It's not where you're where you're actually working. I could I probably could rig it up somehow onto a monitor. I've got a laptop there to see what I'm doing better. How are we looking in here now? We're we looking nice and clean. And nice and clean, so we've got uh, nice clean seats. No, uh, no, nothing in them. The 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 the, the, uh, the seals go right down where they're supposed to go, so the the pistons can move as they're designed to move. And that's what we're, what we're aiming for. What are we doing down there? What are we doing down there? Get a bit of air and press the air, where's the thing will be in? Let's have a look on the mirror and the and the light. Okay, Let's see if I can show you and see myself as well. That looks clean enough to you. I inspect it myself as well. So we're looking outside. To me, that's acceptable. Uh, to you, yeah. That bit's a bit. That little, little that uh, where the spring sits a bit manky still. Should be okay. Right, now what we'll do these pistons and I'll face this away just good so nothing gets stuck in there. Just give these a polish up. These wee pistons. And the right good polish.
Make sure there's no high spots. Look closer in. It doesn't matter on the edges, but closer in, you don't want any high spots at all. Any kind of roughness, nothing that will damage a seal. And I polished these, so I wouldn't, unless you want to spend ages and ages and ages and ages with, with finer grade sandpapers, I wouldn't go. You could do, you could polish out scratches if you had the patience to do it and you had all the sandpaper to do it you could polish down to the to the scratch with the sandpaper and just increase it, increase it, increase it until you got it to a mirror finish but I wouldn't I wouldn't just work with what you've got as long as it's not right on the where the seals sit because the seals are pretty well recessed the actual important seals like the, the, the fluid seals they're the ones that are important. So they're coming up all right. That's okay, isn't it? Yeah, that's acceptable to me. Nice and clean. Get it all ready for reassembly. Is there anything else I want to concentrate on? Um, just give it all a check. Your fingers are great things, they can feel. Right, it's fine. Right, what are we doing here? Just okay, let's get it put back together. And we need cleanliness. Everything clean, just got to make sure everything's nice and clean, huh? Oh, it's not nice and clean. This thing needs clean. This little spring, spring shim thing, it needs a clean. Stop raining, I could get that brake bleeded up. Uh, so I'll get an umbrella sorted out and just in case it starts raining all the electrics will be exposed as I said before so not good there we go it's supposed to be nice and shiny but it's clean it's free of grit so pocket rocket quite nice that's good oh there's sort of pressure in there isn't there <laughs> Don't breathe in the fumes. That's better. That'll be absolutely fine. Make sure there's no grit or nothing on it. Just nice and clean. Some, where did I put that? Uh, I was looking for some grease, some proper grease. What else have I got? What's this stuff here? Where's this stuff anyway? Grease of some sort of description. Of 
QA Petroleum. Doesn't even say QA Oils. Don't know. No idea where that came from. It just appeared. Right. Where am I? I've got this little boot thing. That needs a clean up. Where does that boot go? It came off the caliper, didn't it? sitting in there, yeah it was just sitting in there. So this goes like that. Right. Seems to be a little notch in that for some reason. Do that in a second. This is the clean bit, so seals. Give my hands a wipe. Right, how long have we been doing this? Probably only taking me an hour actually. Oh. Seals. We've got to identify the fat bit, and that's to go on the inside. Of the, or the, the fluid seal, that's very, very important. Because um, you will have problems. There's actually no two ways about it. So that looks to me, let's see if I can get it contrasted. Yeah, that, that side there is definitely fatter, so that goes in it goes in there, it's just a matter of putting them in, and you can always confirm it by running your finger back across it, just to see, it doesn't take much to get it in, it just pop, plops in, does that feel, yeah, yeah it's going the right way now, it's like a barb, you can feel it, it's, Spot on that, so I'll just get this one. That's the fat side. Like I say, you just run your finger back, and if it, you can feel it resistance when your finger comes back out of the where the piston sits, the piston seat. I don't know what the right name for it is. Um, the cylinder, I suppose, isn't it? See, I've put that one in the wrong way around, so that's got to come back out of there. Yeah, I've definitely put that one in the wrong way around. So that's got to come back out, just nice and gently. I don't damage it. Just get that yeah, pokey thing behind it. Pull that, remember which way is the wrong way. in the wrong way again. I think I have as well. Have I? It's very difficult to tell. It's extremely difficult to tell. No, but if that feels right now, is it? Better make sure. No, I think that's in the wrong way again. Yeah, it is. 
Yeah. I'm finding it a real struggle at all. I think it is in the long way. Just trying to get by. Just trying to memorise which way it comes out and then turn it around. That one's so it's quite harder to tell with that one. It doesn't seem so pronounced the lip, unless it's just the wrong way around. Maybe even the lip, the lip has something. The the seat has something to do with it also, possibly. But it has to be right. This is very, very important. Yeah, that feels right now. It's just a tiniest little lip, although it seems more pronounced on this side for some reason. But it's nice and smooth there on the outside. It's nice and smooth on the outside. On the inside, you pull your finger back, it's just the very slightest raise, raise on the seal. But that's right enough. <clears throat> the dust seals go in anyway, they just go in. As long as they seat flat. And you can tell, you always know when you've done this, you've cleaned them out properly, they sit in properly. Mm. It is fiddly. Just will eventually just pop in as long as you get them in square and not uh, cockeyed. So they're sitting flat and not twisted or anything, which I think this one is not twisted. Mm, twisted. It's a little bit twisted there. Correct all the way around. Yep. Like I say, you can always tell when you've cleaned it properly because it'll go in. It won't go in. It'll be there. I've, I've been there, done that, and it just does not go in. So frustrating. But that thing about that uh, fluid seal, very, very important that that goes in. With the lip, the raised lip on the inside, you have to be very, very careful there. It'll have no break. Well, it'll just the oil will just get the fluid will just come straight out past the piston. Not so critical on the back brake. You've got a good front brake on a Triumph, but if your back brake is important on your bike, like it's the main brake, definitely watch that. Oh. Yeah, that's twisted there as well. That's got to sit properly. Oh, put it out. Let's make sure it's all seated right. You can tell with your hands, just seat it in there. Right. So, piston time. Time for the pistons. What we can do, just to ease them in a wee wee bit, is just to put a little bit of oil on them. Just the tiniest little bit of oil. Just to help them, it won't, it won't hurt anything. Just a wee smear oil. The seals will 
evacuate it anyway. And we'll pop them in. And put them all the way in. Same there, just a tiny, tiny, tiny wee bit of oil, just to give us a chance. Make sure it's sitting nice and parallel. Put it straight in, there we go. And then wipe all that oil off. Okay. Right, stick it all back together. We need that. Where did that go? How did that sit? Well, it can only go uh, one or two ways. Try that way first. Doesn't want to sit that way, so does that seem right? Let's try that way. It doesn't want to sit that way, so it must sit this way. to sit that way and then we want to put this in here and what we'll put a bit of grease on these <clears throat> what grease have I got? I have that stuff, I'll try some of this stuff on this mystery grease I think it's a bearing grease actually I don't know, it's some sort of lubricant anyway. So that's going on there. Right, so that's going on there like that. They have to locate that has to locate the little boot yeah that little boot there has to kind of slip on over its little stay yeah there it slipped on over the, uh, you can see that get the torch just throw it away that little boot there there's a little lip that that boot lives on on this uh, bracket and uh, it just goes over that lip. It goes, it's good to have a bit of grease on them. Uh, it helps it to go in a bit better. Right, get the lid back on that. Okay, so we're just ready for the pads. I'll pop that in just now. And actually put a little bit of oil on that thread just to help it out, not too much. Just put a tiny touch of oil in that thread. I don't like dry threads, not good. There we go. That's nice, and just keep that loose. Right, what else do we need to do? pads in, so which is which. That pad goes in there, so I'm going to put a bit of copper slip on the back of that, just to stop it squealing. <coughs> stop that high frequency vibration. Just need a wee bit. What's that there? 
just a wee bit on the, the back of the pad. That sits up. That sits down like that. That goes in there. Oop, and we're out. That sits down in there. That sits. What's that like? Is that dirty or is that clean? That's all right. That sits like that, and then these two pop through. Which I'll, I'll grease up this thread. And it's copper slip, so. Just thought was that a bit of swath on there. A little bit of swath on there. Just grease them up a little bit. And they just pop through the holes of the pads. And get that out of the way. I put this take this pad out of the way for now so I can see where this one is locating, you know. I should make sure I'm locating it right because I'm sure you have to I you have to kind of press down on that spring to line up. That's it, it's lined up now. Put it back a little bit and I get this other one in as well. Not too much copper so just a wee, wee smear of it. Pop that through. Just see if I can try and find some new uh, washers, copper washers for the banjo bolt. Sure, I had some somewhere. <coughs> so this goes back on there again in the right direction we just press down on that and then push the pins through the the hole in the pad that's it and get them tightened up now should have a spanner somewhere I think this is the correct spanner that's it raining again just get it wound in they don't have to be mega 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 tight just have to be tight. That's enough. That's enough for that. Right, what else do we need? This is where we are, we're back at the bike. This is gonna need a clean up. This is the, <clears throat> the brake hose. All the kit I needed at the car for sat there. Put the banjo bowl back in. Just keep the rain out. All the dirt and put the umbrella up. Because all this has got to come off. Because you can see with the it's quite an awkward position. Very, very difficult. So all this has got to come off to get to that. So I'll get on. You see what I mean about needing the brolly <laughs> to get to that thing. And just this little reservoir, all this has got to come off and all this is exposed now. Um, just a side point, these are, are cap head bolts, but they are kind of, you know, ugly looking. The, the, the dome head are far nicer, but these are a far, more, a far stronger bolt for the winter and for a winter biker. They don't round as easy in the stainless and they're easily available. And, they're just far more robust, but they do quite, quite look, kind of look kind of ugly with just a washer. So what I've found online, very, very cheap. They're just aluminium. They're called um, load spreading countersunk washers. And they're for cap heads and they, the cap head just disappears into it. So it looks a little bit, it looks like a dome head bolt, but it has the strength with these you know so I've got them to make it look a bit smarter I'll show you what I mean and I've got these as well I've, I want these to these are these are the countersunk um, allen bolts and I want a uh, cap head which I've just shown you so I bought these things here they're M5s um, 5 mil bolts so I bought the load, load bearing countersunk cap head 
washers I bought I had to buy eight of them because you couldn't buy five I need five you see there's one there's one they're not here I never had these these were just they weren't they weren't even a bolt in there so I'm going to replace all five all the way around this cover and all these um, bolts and they'll they're, they're all be the same size then to hold on that side panel over there and all that's got to come off back wheel to get to this back brake right, I'm going to think about what I'm doing next um, see how much fluid's in there <clears throat> I don't know how much battery's on this thing what I might do is just get it all assembled and then I'll show you how I bleed it as you can see there's a little bit of fluid left it isn't actually that dirty but I want to clean this out so the best way to do it is just to get a bit of kitchen towel in there and just wick it all out I don't want any old fluid going through the system and I want that reservoir to be nice and clean so that's all the old fluid wicked out just about and I'll give it all a nice clean to give my hands a good pamper at it there's a, there's a, a cream called working hands you know, it's for the folk who work in hands, you know, just for workers. And that's it cleaned out, and I've got to fill that up with brake fluid now. Because um, I've got to have something to pump through. What I'm going to do first is clean up this. Uh, and maybe just sit it on there. It's not too bad. I'm just going to sit it on there for now so nothing gets in there. Just, just gently sit it on like that. Get the caliper back on. Tighten the banjo bolt down. That's, you have to do that when the caliper's back on. And you know, I'll come back to the next steps. Alright, so that's the system set up. Um, I've got the, the mire bleeding system set up. I've got the email spanner ready. And that's loose and tightened. And I've got this filled up with and brake fluid and I've got all these bolts tight got that, that uh, banjo bolts tight once I get the caliper on the bike and tighten that up and I've got copper slip on the mounting bolts and uh, they're all ready to go what I usually do is before I start bleeding it is just kind of pump the lever a wee bit just to get the brake fluid to go just to start it off just kind of pump it a little bit you see the, the fluid level going down already just the brake starting to get hard already even before I've pumped any through ok and what I'll do is I'll put a bit more fluid in top it right, I want to uh, flush it right through get nice clean fluid it's never been done this I've done the front a few times I had some issues with the front um, and I've done that a few times so that's full and then just pump that a little bit we're getting a break already it'll still be spongy it won't be fully operational but let's see if we can get any work on that see what I'm doing um, so what you do is you put pressure you can see the brake pedal there you need to go up a bit you can see the brake pedal and you can see the whole operation just hope I won't get my hand in the way so as I press I keep the pressure on um, the brake you can see the fluid coming out and just close it and take the pressure off difficult to film it let's have a look, I just hope my hand's not in the way so again keep pressure on the brake and then open the bleed nipple and close it and then take the pressure off and pump it a little bit yeah pump it a little bit and just carry on pressure on the brake close it pump it a little bit just keep doing that make sure you're on there pump it and then just now and again just check your fluid levels I do want to you know I want to get the fluid right through this 
So even if I get a couple of reservoirs of fluid through the, the caliper, that's fine with me, is there's all air coming out. And sometimes if you've got a lot of air coming out, just pump the brake. Yeah. Or if you feel you've still got a very spongy brake, but you've got no air coming out, just close the, 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 the bleed nipple down and just pump it for a while. And that'll get the air kind of congregated, you know, it builds it up. So I'll just release it again. I'm getting in the air. Hope you can see that okay. And it seems to be running clean now. And there doesn't seem to be any bubbles in that. And I'll keep putting fluid through it. Now that's pretty much lead. There's no air coming out of that thing. I'll just nip up the That's fine, I'm happy with that. So I'll take this off. Put that back in there. That's the brake. And just make sure that's tight. Not too much mad enough. Just, just nip it up. That's it. And put the little dust cut back on it. Um, I don't think I'm going to do the the, the, the the hugger today. It's too wet. I hope you see it. That's about as much brake fluid as you want in there because you've got all this to go in as well. You've got that to go in, and you've got sorry, I had that, that to go in, that to go in. That brake fluid is okay. You've got this cap back on. What I want to do is, I'm going to assemble the wheel put the wheel all back together and, and hopefully the wheel will spin nice and free I'll tighten that, I'll loosen that as well so you better to do that with these things if these things are tight and you're heaving on it you can snap this off really really easy it's better just to loosen that a little bit and even if you hold that while you're trying to turn this you know, just to give this little plastic it's not a little bit of plastic log just give it a bit of support you know right I'm gonna get this thing that's the back wheel back on, I'm just got to get the silencer back on, but yeah. right like that, that's a, a vast improvement. I think it would need a good wash with hot soapy water. Well that's acceptable to me. A bit of use, probably need new brake pads as well. That wouldn't go and mess up pretty. You better got a brake there, a good strong brake, fantastic. Right, I want to say that's a job that was a success. Um, take it for a test run, see that everything's okay. Yeah, happy with that. It's fantastic. I just got to make sure that that brake, banjo ball, the banjo ball, it, it just sits like that. There's no other way that banjo ball can sit. I was thinking maybe that was a bit of, bit of tension on it, but. There's no other way that it can actually sit. Well, that's fine. Right. I'll get this thing buttoned up. I've still got to put the silencer on and I've checked out the uh, fluid, radiator fluid. I've topped that up and I'll check the oil level. It needs a good long hot run this bike. See how I've got the, the mayonnaise in there. So there's been there's a lot of water in the engine. I really need to change the oil. Even difficult to check the oil level. I know it's okay, but it needs a good hot run this motorcycle. Um, I mean it's only raining, isn't it? I'm already wet. Doesn't matter. I'll probably go for a run. Get the silencer back on this thing. And um, thank you very much for following along and watching. I appreciate it.